As a kid, I remember watching my mom's routine every day. As she lay in bed with her eyes closed while she was still half asleep, she'd reached over, and it wasn't until her hand landed on that pack of Salem menthols that a smile would come to her face and she would open her eyes. That is how addicted she was to nicotine. And her addiction began in her mid-20s. And at the time, it was sexy, glamorous to smoke. Ads were everywhere, in newspapers, magazines, on TV, beautiful models smoking. And it was actually almost encouraged. You were an outcast if you weren't smoking. Camel cigarette brands was the number one recommended brand by physicians. And you could smoke in doctor's offices. They had ashtrays in the waiting rooms. You could smoke with your physician as you were being diagnosed and treated. And when you went to the hospital, if you ever ended up there, you had a choice of a smoking room. Can you imagine? Well, little did we know. But we've come a long way, or have we? Let's fast forward to 2023. Smoking has a new face and a new name. It's known as e-cigarettes, vaping. And it is touted to teens and young adults as a safe and harmless and as an alternative to smoking. Well, I have three young men at home. My oldest, 19 at the time, had asked me to go into his backpack and find his calculator. And I did what he asked, and I was in there fumbling. I came across something that I hadn't seen before. And it looked just like this, a very sleek device that looked just like a flash drive. Hmm, and it had a mouthpiece, but something told me not to put my mouth on something that I didn't know what it was. But it had this little button, and I was tempted to press it and put it towards my nose, and I did. And out came this incredible scent of something tropical, tutti fruity, something yummy delicious. And I was immediately transported to a Caribbean island under a beach umbrella, drinking a pina colada. And that scent lingered for a few seconds, minutes, I don't know how long, but it was fantastic. That fantasy woke me up. And at that moment, I was wondering, I'm not a techie, but why would a flash drive be scented? <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't know. I just gave the backpack with this and the calculator back to my son. But I was intrigued at that moment because I wondered, is my 13-year-old and 15-year-old onto this as well? So I discreetly went into my 13-year-old's backpack, and guess what? I found one. It looked exactly the same except a different color. And my 15-year-old wasn't home at the moment, but when he came home, I discreetly went into his backpack, and guess what? He didn't have one. I checked his room, and he didn't have one. But I figured I wanted to have a conversation with all three. And so I found the right moment. And as we gathered around the table, my youngest, my 13-year-old, raised his hands and he said, Mom, have you been under a rock? These are vapes. Everybody knows that. It's on Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. And I even see teachers at school, before class starts, in their cars, vaping. And after sports activities, they're also in their cars doing it. And this is what people use when they want to quit smoking. It's safe. It's a layoff. And my other two looked at me like I had literally been under a rock. I felt this big. Of course, teens know everything, don't they? Well. Well, I wondered at that moment if perhaps there was a correlation between the fact that my oldest and my youngest were constantly sick. My oldest brought COVID to the house and Omicron as well. And he had gotten really sick from COVID. It took him almost a month to get out of bed. 
and my youngest as well had gotten really sick. And they were bringing every strain of whatever to the house, every kind of bug that was in the air they were bringing home, and they were getting sick. And my control subject became my middle one, because he wasn't getting sick. So clearly, in my mind, there was a correlation between vaping and a decreased immunity. And as a mom, as a healthcare professional, and as someone who had worked in stroke for several years, I wanted to learn more. That quest for knowledge, that thirst for finding out if that perception that these were safe was really true. And the first thing I found out was through the National Youth Tobacco Survey. What it revealed was that one in six teenagers and one in 20 middle schoolers had been vaping in 2020. Those numbers were expected to be way higher in 2023. Matter of fact, the Surgeon General of the United States has declared it a national epidemic. You heard right. It's reached that magnitude. This is a national epidemic today. Well, I wanted to find out what's in this thing. So what's in the anatomy of a vape? And what is it? This is a battery-operated device that heats its contents into an aerosol. That means that as opposed to a vapor, you are converting and dispersing the liquid into tiny microparticles that fly into the circulatory system very quickly and very effectively and reach target organs through the circulation. Go to the lungs, to the heart, to the brain, and many other organs throughout the body. Many organs throughout the body. And what is in here? So, depending on the selection of the user, there can be the equivalent of two packs of cigarettes, 40 cigarettes in the pod, which is what some of these are called depending on the brand. Let that sink in for a minute. You are doing this multiple times a day, every day, with some type of tropical, unbelievable flavor. Think about how much you're going to be consuming of this on a daily basis. And in addition to that, there's benzene, which has been found in car exhaust. There's propylene glycol, what's an antifreeze. There's vitamin E acetate, which is normally harmless, but it's not intended to go into our lungs. Where there, it finds a perfect ecosystem for harboring viruses and bacteria in that moist and warm environment. They love it in there. They don't want to leave. And there's also heavy metals. Not as we think of the bands in the 70s, right? Metallica and Iron Maiden and all those. No, these are toxic, harmful heavy metals. Tin, lead, nickel, and many others. Again, think about doing this every day, multiple times a day. Does that sound harmless to you? It sure doesn't sound harmless to me. And smoking always comes back to collect. That, that bill starts the day you begin, and that tab is open until you have an event. And it has many faces. They can come in the form of decreased immunity, lung disease, such as popcorn lung, something that has been seen across emergency rooms all over the country which is irreversible permanent lung damage requiring transplant many times. There's also heart disease, heart attacks, central nervous system disorders, such as seizures, and clotting disorders. Clotting disorders which lead to stroke. All it takes is one blood clot to travel through your circulatory system, through a vein or an artery. When it reaches the brain, it blocks oxygen flow. And it's either an ischemic non-bleeding stroke or a bleeding stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, which most of the times lead to paralysis and or death. Well, you might wonder why this is also personal to me. My journey with stroke began in 2015 when my brother got a stroke. Fortunately, he survived without major functional deficits, that is paralysis. 
And three years later, well, he survived the stroke. Three years later, my sister, who was a ray of sunshine in our home, always happy, she was there every day helping with my kids. Ray of sunshine, happy, healthy, so we thought. She ended up in the emergency room. And upon admission, in less than 24 hours, she had a massive hemorrhagic stroke. In less than 30 days, we lost her. A very tragic event for our family. And just as we were healing from that trauma, my mom, just out of the blue, had an ischemic, ischemic stroke, a non-bleeding stroke. And she survived without major deficits either. Just her memory was affected. But three years later, she had a massive hemorrhagic stroke in December of 2021, a little over a year ago. And as I made sense of all this, and we were healing, we continued healing, the common denominator with all three had been that they were smokers. They were addicted to nicotine. My brother and my sister had gotten addicted in their teens, my mom in her mid-20s. And as the fact that she had quit smoking, and she lived a healthy lifestyle, she ate healthy and exercised, passed that on to me, thankfully, smoking came back to collect, in the worst way and at the worst time. And I didn't want that cycle to repeat itself with my kids. So circling back to my kids, my oldest kept telling me all the time that the reasons he was drawn to vaping was to ease his stress, his anxiety, his depression, all the things teenagers are dealing with today. But instead, he found himself in a vicious cycle, because that's all he could think about all day, is when is he going to get that next hit? Because this is addictive. It's just like a drug, any drug. You are in an addiction. That's all he could think of all day. When was he going to get the next hit? When could he find his next hit? But fortunately, he was not on that brand that contained the equivalent of two packs of cigarettes. And he hadn't been vaping for too long either. Two years, but still not too long. And neither had my 13-year-old. So fortunately, he made the decision to quit vaping because he realized that the risk of stroke way outweighs any pleasure or benefit that he could get from vaping. And it wasn't easy. But I figured that that dialogue that I had with him that day and with them eventually sank in. And they also needed support. They looked, he looked for apps and other resources to help him. And he ditched the vape. Well, my friends, we are at the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the health consequences and the price your teen will pay when vaping comes back to collect because it has many different faces, like I shared with you. And it doesn't help that it took over 30 years for legislation to pass, for the labeling to change in the packs of cigarettes. Think about how long it might take for changes in the labeling of vaping to happen, because all they say today is that they contain nicotine and it's a harmful substance. We know it contains so much more than that. So I want to leave you with three things. One is empower your teens through knowledge. It's conversation, education, not confrontation. Ultimately, it's their decision, and usually they know it all, but hopefully they'll come to their senses. Two is remind them how much money they're spending on these devices, making others rich. Put it in paper. When you tally the amount of money they're spending weekly, monthly, it resonates with them because it's a lot of money. And third, we are at a critical intersection when it comes to needing radical change to stop this national epidemic. And you can be an agent of change. Spread the word. Be a catalyst of change because you don't want this to come back and affect a loved one because smoking always comes back to collect. And I want to leave you with one last thing. I was on a work assignment in Europe, and I was so impressed to see that all the cigarette boxes have an image of lung disease, heart disease, stroke, cancers, teeth. We never think of that. But all the packs 
have a face to it. And this is what it might take to make a change with vaping in the United States. Thank you very much.